When talking about computer concepts, I find it's always much easier if we can relate the computer to what happens in the real world. So let's take an example. Now I'm sure this isn't you, but an example of maybe some other types of people in the world that I like to call the filing cabinet progression. What happens is you collect stuff. And I know because paper is my nemesis. I hate paper and I don't manage it well because I have too many other things to do in my life. So ultimately, I end up with a stack of papers on my desk. And that stack grows and grows and grows. And while I know that everything is in there somewhere, it starts taking me an inordinate amount of time to find a particular piece of paper. So ultimately, I get smart and I say, well, okay, maybe I can take that stack of papers and at least start putting things into file folders at least by having them in file folders, then first I look for the folder, then I can find the individual piece of paper. And those folders could be organized in any variety of ways. It could be by a particular piece of software that I'm working with. It could be with a particular project or client. So these folders, again, could be organized in many different ways, but it's kind of the first level of organizing that huge stack of papers that otherwise would just be a bunch of individual pieces of paper and very hard to manage. What I also know is that eventually this stack of file folders also gets to be unmanageable. I can't see over the top of my desk anymore and occasionally I knock them with my elbow and they all fall on the floor and that is a mess. So the next thing that I turn to is a filing cabinet. Now there are a lot of different kinds of filing cabinets in the world. There's filing drawers, there's filing cabinets, there's big ones, small ones, vertical ones, lateral ones. We don't care what it is. But by putting things into a filing cabinet, at least everything is sitting in the same direction. They're kind of all held together so they're not going to fall off my desk. And I can organize the drawers, maybe by putting personal items in the top drawer and business items in the bottom drawer. If you work in a business environment, you may outgrow the filing cabinet. This is also true of your personal life. Sometimes we have too many files. And I certainly hope that you still don't have your taxes from six years ago still sitting in the drawer next to your desk. Even though we have to keep things like tax records for an extended period of time, ultimately we finally move them off into some other location. At home, we may put them into a box and move them into the garage. Hopefully, we then get around to cleaning out the garage after a few years. In business, this often becomes the file room. Some place where we can put files that aren't exactly active. They're not working with things that we work with all the time, but they're things that we still need to have access to or that we need to keep for record keeping purposes. So hopefully that sounds at least a little bit familiar, if not for you, because I'm sure you are the ultimately organized person, probably somebody at least that you know. Well, now let's take that analogy PC style. We still have a variety of things that we need to keep track of. And on a computer, we keep track of these things on the computer itself. In other words, in the CPU. Now, this is a very kind of clear definition. Yes, I do understand that you can also store things in other places, but for our purposes and for our analogy, we're going to be storing everything either on a hard drive or a CD drive or a USB drive that we keep right in the computer itself. In our analogy, each drawer that we have in our filing cabinet is equivalent to a drive on the computer. On computers, drives have letter designations, A, B, C, D, and so forth. Now, depending on your computer, you may have two or more drawers or two or more drives as part of your CPU. On a home computer, you probably have at least two drives. It used to be that that was a hard drive and a floppy disk. These days, it's usually a hard drive and a CD or a DVD. But again, you could have more. On a business computer, you're certainly going to have more because you will not only to things on your personal computer, a local drive, but also things available on the network. The network is the equivalent of the file room. The typical letter designations, even though these can be different, is for your hard drive to be your C drive and your CD or DVD to be a D drive. And again, you could have multiple DVD drives and you could even still have a floppy drive if you're using an older computer. The floppy drives are usually the A drive, just as a matter of reference. When we have a drive, or in this case, the analogy of a drawer, each drawer or drive can contain only two different things. It can either contain folders or pieces of paper in the real world, and on the computer, it can contain folders or files. That's important to remember because if we keep it simple, remember the KISS principle, keep it simple, sweetie, we only have to worry about two things at a time. 
does my particular drawer or my particular drive contain folders and or files. But if you have a folder, a folder can also contain either more folders or files. So again, think back to the filing cabinet. You open a drawer, and in this case you're opening your C drawer, which is your hard drive on your computer. Inside the physical filing cabinet drawer, you can have a whole collection of manila file folders. Inside of a manila file folder, you usually have one or more pieces of paper. But you also can have an accordion file in your drawer. And an accordion file not only can contain individual pieces of paper, but it also could contain manila folders. This is kind of the hierarchy that we get into with our computer. Our C drive, our hard drive, can contain folders, and those folders can contain files. But a folder can also contain something called a subfolder. Subfolders can contain, once again, either folders or files, so you kind of see how this is going. Now when we talk about a network, that's when the file room analogy comes into play. All of the drives that we're talking about so far are on our local computer. But in a business, we often need to walk across the hall to get to multiple client files. Using our analogy, the same thing is true with a computer network. We have drives on our local computer, but we also have drives that are on network servers. That's the equivalent of going over to the file room. We're going to go to the server because the server can be one server, it can have one drive, it could have 20 drives, it could have 2,000 drives, just like we can have large and small file rooms. The reason we would use a file room and the reason we would use a server is because we don't want to keep all of those files on our desk either because there's too many files for us to keep on our desk or because other people need to have access. If you keep files on your local computer, in a business environment it's going to be more difficult for other people to get access to those files, just like if you had it in your own filing cabinet. But by keeping it on a server, on a network, then everybody has access to it, just like they would if it was in a file room. So hopefully you get the idea here. The analogy really works, and even though it's an analogy that's been around a really long time, as I like to say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and it really helps to accurately describe the file structure on